everyone. I am Dori Chattel. I am the executive director of the Nonprofit Medical Education Institute and your moderator for tonight. Welcome to the Home Dialysis Central webinar about new year, new dialysis, how to fit dialysis into your life. And this is sponsored by Outset Medical. We have a terrific bunch of guests. You can see them now on your screen. And I know that you're really going to enjoy the session and learn a lot. To ask questions, please use the chat at the bottom. See, it says Q&A. I believe that that's, I guess you could use Q&A. I thought there was a chat box too. Am I missing one? No, chat, chat is over, chat is over, um, next to participants, kind of over to the left. So that's probably the best one to use for questions. So um, one of us will read your questions out loud and then um, ask the panelists, most likely it will be me. And as you know, we're recording this session so that folks who can't be here tonight can watch it later. We are live on Zoom and Facebook. So welcome everyone. And we're going to start with introductions, and I'm going to call on our panelists, and then we'll get going. So let's see. I'm going to call on Elise, because she is on the top row for me. I know we all see this differently, but I'm going to call on Elise. I'm just going to have her tell you, um, you can see her name, but you know, I'm going to tell you how she came to be, have her tell you how she came to be here. And does she have any pets? I have three rescue cats, by the way. Go ahead, Elise. <laughs> so my name is Elise Edson, and uh, I live in Colorado with my husband, our five chickens, and our three dogs. <laughs> and, your, and your three what? Our three dogs. 2.5 oh. Shih Tzus. 2.5 Shih Tzus. <laughs> and, and the dogs don't bother the chickens. No, they're they're friends. I could send you some funny photos. <laughs> I'm super jealous of the chickens. I would love to have chickens, but I've never had them, but I still want them. Um, Especially Brittany, right now. <laughs> Brittany, you are next on my list here. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name's Brittany and I'm based in San Jose, California. And I don't have any pets, but I hope to one day get a dog. Okay. Well, I mean, Elise could give you a half. Of <laughs> okay. That's probably a bad idea. Aaron, Aaron how about you? Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Porter Lacey. I am in Stowe, Ohio, and I'm a patient on Tableau, and I'm currently trying to convince my husband that we can get a dog, so working on it. Let us know if we can help with that. Yes, yes, yes we will. Group. Very persuasive. Um, Cleo and Melvin, tell us a little about you. Uh oh, are you frozen? Oh no, oh, no. we were doing so well. Um, okay. Oh, wait, now you're not frozen. Wait, would you, Cleo, Melvin, would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, are still frozen. Okay. You may need to go out and come back in, and I will let you back in. Um, yeah, okay, that's what they're doing. Excellent. Um, Jen, I'm going to jump to you and I'm going to keep track of whether Cleo and Melvin come back in as attendees. Let's see. I'm Jen. I'm in upstate New York. I have two rescue cats, they're sisters, and I have two rescue dogs. They're not related at all. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Dr. Silva. Hi, I'm Cynthia Silva, a medical officer at Outset. I have uh, three boys and a husband, so that's four pets, and <laughs> none of them are friends. So if your chickens need more friends or you want a rescue <laughs> husband, just come on down to Connecticut. You could pick him up free of charge. I'll throw in food and everything. Aww. Oh, that's awesome. <sighs> Two of my cats are sisters. And there we go. We got Mel They're back. We got Cleo and Mel back. Two of my cats are sisters and the other one isn't. And one's friends with her and one isn't. And it's just like a chaos in my house. So um, you are back. On He's connecting to audio. He's got it. Exactly. Yay. Oh, we're still getting some. It was. It was perfect until we tried to call him. 
Why is it so connecting to the audio? Melvin's yeah. working on it. It's an, an internet uh, slow down thing is maybe what it is. What you could do if it's really a challenge is turn the video off because then it uses less bandwidth. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but if you can, sometimes that will work. All right. What I think we'll do while they're getting settled is, Aaron, I'm going to jump to, oh, can you hear us? Okay, we can't hear you. We can see you. I know. I'm starting to think that when we have a really great practice, it's doom for the actual <laughs> webinar. <laughs> I don't know why that is the case, but uh, it it. It does seem to be a challenge. But what I'm going to do so that we keep moving is I'm going to have um, Aaron, if you wouldn't mind telling us about your kidney journey and how you came to be with us tonight now using the Tableau. And I know that you have done all the things and know everything. So then um, when you're done, we'll have Melvin and Cleo introduce themselves and tell us about their journey, and we'll just switch the order up a little bit. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Erin, and my journey with kidney disease and dialysis started back in 2011. Um, I was diagnosed with kidney failure from, they assume, from type 1 diabetes. Um, so was diagnosed, it went very quickly, started dialysis a few months after the diagnosis was discovered. Um, was on dialysis in center for about six months, got a call, received a transplant, um, pancreas and kidney, so that was amazing. And that lasted about eight years. Oh, okay. Um, the pancreas lasted longer than the kidney, surprisingly. Um, so that put me back on dialysis and at that time I was feeling like I my fistula no longer worked so I decided to go ahead and do PD because I didn't want another surgery on my arm and I did not enjoy that experience so I'll just leave that at that PD wasn't for me it is for others it's not for me um, so I decided to go back in center at that point then I got a graft put into my arm um, into the same arm over top of my fistula and I went back in center, was working full time. It was really hectic. What um, kind of work do you do? I'm a special education teacher. So I don't know if anyone has seen the blog that I did with Outset Medical. Literally after work, I would run back to my classroom after dismissal to put my numbing cream on my arm, pack everything up and get to my chair time in center. Very hectic. So you had an afternoon chair time, which is yes, I had third chair to help you keep your job. Wow. Yes. Um, so doing that, I was exhausted. Um, just a lot going on. Tried to consider home hemo. Started the training. You know, that's about a five week training with next stage. I don't know if I can say that with next stage. Five to six week training plus work. I was intimidated, overwhelmed. I stopped. Went back in center for about a year and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And we kept getting notifications that you've been exposed I think I can. because we're all so close in an in center. Um, so then I said, you know what? It's time for me to put my brave face on and train for home. At that time, I trained for next stage, obviously. Um, and I did next stage for about a year. I had some other health complications that put me in the hospital for a, a long time, a couple leg surgeries. And while going through all that, I discovered the Tableau through Outset Medical, through Instagram, um, just a hashtag dialysis on Instagram. And wow. Outset Medical's page came up and I was like, this is amazing. This is what I want to do. How do I get this machine? So still going in center, but making phone calls and trying to figure out. And luckily, um, the person I talked to said, we just started using that machine in Northeast Ohio, not far from where you are. So 
y'all getting more phone calls, got everything together, switched the nephrologist so that I could have one that supports the Tableau machine and started training in, that was in May of 2022, not this year, it's a new year. So uh, yeah. yeah, all right. So about, is that eight or nine months? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. I will ask you a little later kind of how your experience compares, but thank you so much. Now, let me see if we've got Melvin. And They're back. We're back. We're back. We apologize. For that. I don't know what happened. I'm, the internet is not always our friend. Space got it. We it's would, true. True. I would love it if you would tell us a little about you and if you have any pets and then just share your journey and how you came to be here tonight. Oh, sure, sure, no problem. Uh, first of all, we don't have any pets because Cleo is- uh, That's right, Cleo said she's allergic to all of I'm allergic, yeah. yes. You're, yep, I knew that. So anyway, thank you for having us. Um, I'm Melvin, she's Cleo Covington, and um, we. Uh, she's my caregiver. But anyway, my, my route to dialysis began uh, in the military, actually. Uh, I did 23 years in the Air Force, and uh, during my later years, I was uh, experiencing uh, elevated blood pressure. And uh, I had bypass surgery in 1995. And from there, to make a long story short, I was seeing my cardiologist once we moved to, here to San Antonio. And uh, he asked me if I've been screened for kidney disease. So I, anyway, I ended up being fortunate to run into Dr. Uh, Broman, the new neurologist, and he's been wonderful. He's wonderful. And uh, when I met with him, I saw him in 2008, uh, 2009, I'm sorry. And uh, once I met with him, he said, you know, normally you fortunate guy, because normally when you come to me, it's too late. You in stage two now. So I like, oh, okay, well, that's a good thing, I guess. And um, from there, from 2009 to 2016, I progressively got worse. And by 2016, he told me I was in stage four. So um, he gave me the option for PDs. And uh, we decided to, after the discussion, long discussion, we decided to go with the fiscular. Uh, one of the main reasons my siblings before me had um, had fiscalis, and one of them was on wow. dialysis for like 15 years. Wow. Uh, I, I decided to go with the fiscal, but the main thing about that was I can't stand to stick myself or needles. So she had agreed to, I can do that. And she had to convince me. So we went with that. And uh, from there, uh, we started uh, home deal by home de uh, oh, hemodialysis yeah. in uh, 2018. And between that time, Dr. Brown said, in case something happened to you, you might want to go ahead and get your PD, whatever you decide to do. So we went with the fiscal. I got installed. And uh, in 2018, June 11, 2018, we started dialysis home hemotraining. Yes. So we started with Next Stage, and we finally moved to, uh, for two and a half years, right? And yeah. Then we went to um, uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful machine called Tableau. I mean, wonderful. <laughs> but uh, we'll get into that later. But yeah, uh, so that's my journey pretty much in the, sh in the short version. I'm so glad you made it back and <laughs> been able to share your story. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, I'm going to jump to um, Dr. Silva and I'm going to ask her what was it as a physician that persuaded you that there was really something to home dialysis versus in-center dialysis? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really, <laughs> it's a really deep question. And I would love to actually talk about it for 60 minutes, but you guys will all. Think <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll distill it a little. I think if we just take a step back, when you, when you think about home and kind of in, in, putting together my thoughts to speak on this um, with such a great group of people. If you actually look up the meaning or the root of the word home, in Latin, the origin actually is the same word you use for your person or your being. And I think that speaks volumes when you talk to somebody, you know, many people say, oh, do you wanna come over to my home? This is my home, oh, I just got home. And we all understand that that word, um, it's very important. It's a place where we typically feel safe. Uh, we feel comfortable. Um, we can express ourselves. And so having 
uh, the ability to get a life-saving procedure when you're not in your most comfortable state, when you're approaching as, you know, Miss Erin and Mr. Melvin and Miss Cleo said, learning these machineries uh, that are complicated, where all your blood is coming out of your body before your eyes, you know, to do these things in a setting where you feel incredibly safe and comfortable is really um, something to be said about that feeling. Um, and, I, you know, I see everybody shaking their head because that, when you think about home and the smell of your home and the just these things that are not really, they're not physical things, our home is just really our safe place. And so as I have taken care of dialysis patients over the last, you know, two decades or so, helping them reach their optimal goal of being daily life, maybe that's work, maybe that's school, maybe that's just having a higher appetite. Everybody's goals are different. And those goals are really hard to achieve while you're on dialysis. Our patients, they're tired. They don't taste food as well. Um, sometimes they actually taste metal in their mouth when it's not there. Things taste gross. Their sleep is disrupted. Their energy is low. Um, and when you start to look at the data coming out of patients on home dialysis, lots of these, as we call them, patient reported outcomes or a regular person's word for that is their feelings improve, right? It's your feelings. Um, and so we, we, there's a lot of data out there that looks at sleep, how people sleep on, you know, when they're in center versus home dialysis, their insomnia scores go way down when they're doing home dialysis, uh, their energy levels go up. Um, their time to recovery. So after you get dialysis, your time to recovery, actually that shortens and you're more energetic when you're on home dialysis. Um, they take fewer medications when you're on home dialysis. And, you know, it's hard to piece apart. Are you happier because you're doing the thing, you know, Miss Aaron is being a teacher and she's not running around and she's in charge of her schedule and she can plan um, and she has control, right? I mean, we as human beings, we love control. And so we see all of these feelings and markers of well being in life go up on home dialysis. And, you know, that's more than any medication I could give in a clinic or any pep talk that I could give. Those feelings that they started to improve upon really made me a big fan of, of home dialysis. I, I used to have a quote that was on the door, uh, on the wall of our office that was almost exactly what you just said about control being more important than any drug or any therapy, that that's what gives people back their lives. Um, I'm going to go to Jen because I managed to check off the box that I had had her introduce herself, only then I realized I hadn't had her introduce herself, and I know that she has seen the same thing, so this would be a great time to jump to Jen. What? Well, I talked about my dogs and my cats, but I forgot to tell everyone that I was home dialysis training nurse um, for about 10 years. I live in New York, um, so we have a lot of home dialysis patients here. I've trained across a, a whole bunch of systems. And then um, my grandmother and my dad were also dialysis patients. So I've also had it in my own house. My mother's also learned dialysis. So I've seen it um, I've seen it in my own home and I've seen it in other people. So that's kind of what made me a, a believer. And I completely agree with you say, obviously about environment, how being in your own environment, getting to be comfortable where you're at, you know, the time that treatment takes is the time that treatment takes. And it's a lot of time, but where would most people prefer to be than where they're already most comfortable? I, I have to wonder if a, at least a little bit of that insomnia is worrying about who's going to put in your needles the next day when you go to treatment? Because I've, um, I've interacted with more than 20,000 folks on dialysis over the 33 years I've worked in this field. And I see that come up a lot. You know, the, I woke up in a cold sweat at three o'clock in the morning because I had dialysis the next day and I didn't know who was going to put those needles in. So 
take when you take back control, you take back everything. So control, how does that resonate with um with you and and Cleo with you and and Melvin? How how has that been important and how is your experience at home different? Well, you didn't go in center, but in that case, how was your experience at home different between the two machines a little bit? Oh, night and day. Yeah. I say that all the time because it's night and day. Next stage saved Mel's life. It kept him going. And we appreciate that. However, next stage was very complicated. The training was long, which was fine because I didn't mind doing it. Well, and it was your first time. Yeah, first time and everything. And it was a lot of work, more work compared to Tableau. When next stage you got to hang these bags because we our water system wouldn't do the pure flow we Mm -hmm. tried it several times so we had to hang bags and then you got all this these big volumes that you got to go through for codes if you have an issue with the machine or something when jeff which works in dr broman's office he is the clinical director in dr broman's office when he introduced me to the tableau machine i was so excited because i was like wow this is gorgeous this sleek machine compared to this big bulky machine and it had jugs, just jugs. And it was so easy. And when we got the machine home, he told me, he said, I'll train you in two weeks. It took me two days to train on top. Right. We and got you, you had already done home. Yeah. So yeah. And had, we got everything there, right. yeah, there are commonalities between machines, but it, yeah. it was designed to be very easy to use. And we got home. It was like, so self-explanatory. You don't have any problems. It tells you everything to do step by step. I can walk away from the machine and I feel comfortable knowing that he's okay because I can hear it, you know, when I'm away from it. And it works great. It's not difficult to clean up. It's not difficult to set up. It's not uh, the storage. We have so much more storage space. Wow. Before we had boxes of, you know, bags everywhere. And it just took up so much room. One third, one third of the storage. Yeah. Oh, so wow. now it's a wow. Big yeah. Yeah, it's so much different. I mean, I, it takes me what five minutes to set up, where it used to take me thirty to forty-five minutes to set up, and it is it's easier and it's nice. And the thing that I love about it the most is that I have noticed that since Melvin has been on Tableau, he feels better. Hmm. He has more, more energy. energy. He gets up and he go and he do, and I see the difference in that, and that makes me very happy. So I love I Tableau. Can I imagine. tell everybody about it because it's such a good system. I was, well, I, I, I was telling these folks uh, when we did our practice yesterday that I've been following that machine for about 20 years. So it's <laughs> nice to finally see it available and, and, and people, you know, enjoying it and benefiting from it. And, yes. you know, our perspective is people need choices. There are, yes. You know, there's no one machine that fits everybody's needs, but it is really great when you find the one that meets your needs. Yes. Right. So, um, Aaron, how about you? How, I mean, you've done all of the treatments. Uh, you you could write a book. I've already written a book. You could write a book too. Um, or maybe I should have you read my entire book so that you can tell me if I got everything right. Anyway, how how has it been different for you being in center and then being home? Did it give you back control? Yes, um, a lot of control. Um, the main thing, I mean, I could, again, write a book about the differences. The we biggest thing is the time. <laughs> the t- amount of time spent in treatment is, like, use this again, night and day. Um, I literally, like, it's, I run treatment three hours. I was four hours and 15 minutes in center. How, how many days a week? So I do, I can do still three days a week if I choose. I personally do every other day because I know way better. And because the system is so easy to set up and actually do, I do every other day to give my body the best fighting chance, obviously. But the biggest thing for me is the time. I begged and begged in center to get my time reduced. And it was always a numbers thing. And with Tableau, as soon as I started, they say, you don't need that much time on this machine. So amazing. Hmm. And my clearance is above what it needs to be. So that's the most important part. I'm meeting clearance. 
I, I actually, I would say the most important thing is how you feel. Yes. More important than those clearance numbers because numbers are numbers. What matters is you're still working full time yeah. with kids. With kids. <laughs> That's a lot of energy. Oh. Kids are so much energy. Oh, yeah. yes. You know, the fact that you have the energy to keep your job, that sort of a job that is really a high energy job, not just mentally, but physically. Mm -hmm. To me, that's more important than any number. Yeah, true. And I do feel better. And a lot of it too, is also the mental weight of knowing I don't have to go sit in center. Right. I can come home, do what I need to do. And at night, relax when I'm running my treatment. Do you put your needles in? Yes, I do. Excellent. Good for you. Okay. We like to see that when we can. Um, all right. Well, so now we've, now that we've heard a little bit from folks who have used this machine, felt the difference between other treatments they've done, I want to ask Elise and Brittany to comment on human factors testing. What does that mean? How does that work? Why do we care? And, and y'all can just both kind of bounce off each other or take turns. It's fine. Either way, we're casual here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's just talk a little bit first about what the heck a human factor is, because for many of us- I know what a human is. is. What's a factor? <laughs> and so uh, here's what it is. So we all make mistakes, right? We are human. We forget things. We get hungry. We get bored. You know, we get thirsty. We misunderstand things. And these things are as much about being human and as part of the human experience as breathing and sleeping. And these are what are called human factors. They're essentially the things that separate us from machines. And so human factors as a discipline for what Brittany and I do, uh, we're concerned about understanding these limitations so we can help design uh, medical devices which are kind and which appreciate these limitations that people get tired, they get scared, they forget things. So rather than punishing you for making a mistake, you right. can't make uh, scary mistakes. That's the whole point of human factors. It's about understanding how I you love that. Yeah. Understanding how you naturally think and work and using that so that we can create medical devices, even complex things like hemodialysis machines that don't have to be complex to use. Right. Okay. That is very cool. It's really what cool. a really great explanation. Of course, I am picturing Tesla. So when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe they maybe they need to do more of that. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in one. How about you, Brittany? Any any thoughts about that or anything that you would add to that? Honestly, I think Elise put it beautifully. You know, just did. designing for the user. Yeah. So how did that work with the Tableau? How did you do it? How did you find people? How many people? What sorts of things did you learn? Either oh. one. <laughs> yeah, I can go ahead and do that. Yeah, so uh, we've, we've completed a lot of um, human factor studies, actually over 15 since 2013. And um, wow. we actually completed one recently this past April, which is one of the largest human factor studies ever published. And for this one, it included 15 patient and care partner pairs who um, we came in and had um, test out Tableau in a simulated home environment. And um, I just want to start out by saying the results were great. We had them come in and, and interact with Tableau doing everything that they would be expected to do if they were to use it in home, such as um, setting up for treatment, um, monitoring and taking down treatment, as well as responding to alarms, and even seeing if they could comprehend the user manual. Mm -hmm. And um, so across all these tasks, over 50, over 5,400 tasks were performed across all participants, which is like an insane amount. And I just want to note that this was done after worst case training. So they only underwent two days of training where normally they would undergo two weeks of training or even longer, depending on how long it took them to feel comfortable. And despite that, you know, performance was great. And I think this really spoke to the intuitiveness and, and learnability of Tableau because they were able to use their knowledge from training as well as their existing knowledge of dialysis to figure out how to use Tableau with minimal use issues. 
it, is this a typical approach or is this unusual in the dialysis field? Because I honestly don't know. I've never kind of seen this side of it. Oh, that's a, a great question. This is this is the typical approach. So we normally try to have 15 users come in and, and use a device. And it's also just um, standard for human factors testing as well. But I mean, does, does the FDA require human factors testing or is that sort of above and beyond? That's a great question. I can take that on, uh, which is uh, since 2016, FDA has required this testing, but any devices that were cleared before that generally have not been asked to provide this data. And so that's, I think, an invitation that Brittany and I hope that, that everyone can take away from this is that human factors data, um, you know, we can't change the fact we're human. <laughs> you know, we all get into crisis moments, you know, we all make mistakes, but human factors data provides a measure of confidence that when you take a medical device like any hemodialysis system into your home, that you can use it unsupervised and have the control that you're expecting, and you can do it safely and effectively. So human factors data essentially gives you evidence the device can be used for its intended purpose safely and effectively. So, you know, I went to school in the show me state, you know, in Missouri. And so that's, you know, a message from this is you can ask before you bring a medical device into your home, you can be like, show me, show me the human factors data, prove to me that when I am alone and it's 2 a.m. and I'm tired and something goes wrong, that I can, you know, fix it quickly and nothing bad will happen. Human factors data helps to give that confidence that in those crisis moments, when you're in lizard brain, you'll do the right thing. Yeah, I knew we were going to learn things. So I have learned a new thing tonight. I did not know any of this and that, that it does give you a feeling of confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it gives me confidence to hear it and I'm not using a machine. So, um, okay, that is very helpful. And I also appreciate that you kind of explain what, what that means to people and that they can ask about it. And that this is a change from 2016, which I had no idea. I never heard that come out anywhere. This is the first I've heard of that. So that is very cool. So the training, both all of you sort of, you, you um, okay, some days I speak English and some days I apparently speak, I don't know, some alien language. But um, Cleo, you mentioned that, that it had been like just a couple of days to do training. And we kind of heard that from sort of the worst case scenario, human factors testing too, but you know, how was the training different? I know it's impossible to kind of take out the fact that, you know, you had been through training before you knew what a blood pump was, you knew what, you know, you kind of knew what a, what the extracorporeal circuit was. You, you kind of knew the anatomy of a machine. This was a different machine. So it's, it's relearning versus learning, but, but still. Well, how, how was it different? And then, and then Aaron, I'll ask you the same thing. Okay. I would say that the training was different because all of the uh, equipment, all of the different lines, like the waistlines, the jugs, the uh, saline, all of that was so different compared to next stage. It was so much easier. You know, I love the waistlines because they're thick like hoses. You don't have to, it's not hard to connect. When you are uh, with the next stage, their waistlines are so tiny that so I would have to tape it up with lots of tape to keep it from falling or being in a way where you can trip over it or anything like that. With Tableau, I don't have to do that. With the machines of the jugs, it's very easy to clean the jugs, clean the area and get it on it and get it going quickly. Uh, if there's a problem where something is wrong on the lawn come up, I can do it very, very quickly because the machine tells you exactly what to do. I don't have to so look you don't have there. to look it up in a, a binder or something. Right, to I don't have to go what to is, anything. What is code, whatever, 60. Exactly, years. it's like what to do, how to do it, do it, do it quickly. That is such a difference. Sure. And like you said, flexibility is uh, a good thing too because we get to do it when we want to do it. And I didn't have any problems switching over because everything was so much easier. It's not that it was so, you know, I learned everything in next stage so it was easy to do Tableau. It's just that Tableau made it very simple to eat, to learn how to change over, to switch to one At, operation to another. Just hitting on that human factors thing in particular, have you ever had anything go wrong that the Tableau sort of kept you safe? No. 
Actually, Tableau does everything. I mean, I got I had we had an alarm with the um they had lightning, had a bad thunderstorm once. And the bad the thunderstorm, he was on treatment. And the thunderstorm hit the machine, the lightning hit the box, the house box, and the machine stopped. I That's immediately terrifying. Yeah, it is, but it took me exactly what 30 seconds to turn it back on. Wow, we continued 30 seconds, if anything. I just shut it off, shut it down, put it back on. And I just kept flushing his lines while we were going so he wouldn't cannulate, you know, wouldn't clog and anything. And that the, was quick. Circuit, yeah. So I've had that experience, not on that particular level, but with next stage where I had to just take him down quick. And but it took longer to get everything going. But with Tableau, it took me 30 seconds to do it. And it is that's about the most that we've had yeah. a problem with is that we're doing a thunderstorm. But it was very easy to bounce right back. And the training, like I said, it was very easy for me because it's so simple. It's, it tells you what to do. It tells yeah. you how to handle anything. If it's something wrong, I've had problems with the machine may have had uh, a bad cartridge in it or something. And it would just tell me discontinue treatment or change cartridges and then continue treatment again. I can do that in what, five minutes. Does it, cartridges does it so tell you or does it sort of show you in pictures? It's it been a while. It gives you pictures. Gives you pictures. Yes, it, it gives, gives you pictures. pictures and it tells you at the same right. time. Okay. It's That's very true. simple. I mean, it just like, it shows you. Check this connection. Check this check connection. The, check the, the uh, arterial connection. Check your uh, venous connection. Check wow. the jugs. Check this. It's just very, very simple. And I think that it would be very important for people who are a little bit intimidated by all of this to know that you don't have to worry about being frustrated on what to do because the machine is going to help you. Does and, um I'm going to actually jump in and ask um, Elise or Brittany a question that just popped into my head. Is there is there anything that the Tableau would do to alert folks to a venous needle disconnection? Is that something that's built in? That's a great question. And, you know, Brittany, I'll let you speak to those alarm conditions. But uh, in general, uh, this would be interpreted as a, as a pressure issue. And then there would be an alarm to walk you through that. Do you want to add anything to that, Brittany? Even on the venous needle, though, where the pressure is negative. That's a good question. Brittany, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think we still have uh, system alarms that would be able to track if it gets like too much one way or the other. So it would show an alarm on the screen and walk the user through instructions on how to fix that. Okay. I, mean, I, I believe yeah. that next stage also can do that now, but but that's relatively new. And I, I don't actually had that problem. That, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, where the pressure was low mm -hmm. and the machine would say, your venous pressure is low. And I get that alarm. So I would simply just adjust the needle, heighten the, the, the port so that it can go and just continue treatment. So the machine does tell you everything about the venous and the arteria. The pressure really is what does. to do. Mm -hmm. All right. And Aaron, it took you two tries to get home with Next Stage, and now you're on Tableau. So I think we know that it was easier for you, but did you want to add anything to your kind of description of training and, and how it went? Um, just the, the simplicity of it with Tableau, with the instructions for what to do on that screen. It's not like you said, like you said, there's pictures, there's words, you read it. The pictures are animated. So it's literally showing you where to connect this. Mm -hmm. And until you hit continue or check the box, it's gonna keep, it's on like replay to show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then once you do it, you check it off, it goes to the next step and it shows you. So, I mean, it's, anybody could do it. Like I always tell my husband and my mother, if I can't, you can set this up for me just by looking at the screen. And even with takedown, my husband did, he didn't do any of the training, but he's able to take down and clean everything up based on looking at that screen. It's almost like a video showing you what yes. to do. Mm -hmm. and, so and, super simple. And, and now you've made me think of something else, which is, are y'all planning to go for FDA approval for solo home hemo for the indication? Is that in the plans? I I, I don't know how to answer that question. No, I, no, I'm I'm asking Elise or okay, I was gonna say, <laughs> Dr. Silva. 
Y- y'all would, y'all might know. I I'll, I'll feel that. everybody else could go back on mute and enjoy themselves. I'll, I'll take that one. I think, um, I think there's a lot in the pipeline. I yeah. think the very um, cool thing about Outset is that we're really taking customer feedback. And so prioritizing what the needs of the patients at home are and kind of putting that at top of mind and top of list versus having an indication just um, to say we have this indication. And so very roundabout way of saying it really comes down to prioritization of, of what the patients are needing right now. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you to share anything you can't share, but are you able to share anything about what those priorities might be? Is one of them solo so that more people might have the opportunity to, to go home? Sure. Yeah. Solo is definitely on the list of things that we are looking at. Uh, All right. Absolutely. Then I'm going to ask the bigger question, which is a question that somebody asked anonymously, one of our attendees. Well, when traveling, can you go from home to a center? Here's somebody who's going to go on a cruise with dialysis at sea, mm-hmm. for example. Um, this machine is not portable. Are there plans to make it portable or to somehow otherwise support travel? Yeah, so um, I think there, uh, you know, I would love to say I make those decisions, but I'm not even. (laughs) I would love to say I make them too, but I don't. (laughs) I think definitely, you know, for the patients that I've worked with, having broader areas where Tableau exists, for example, you know, young Aaron had to find a new nephrologist. I don't know if people realize how brave and amazing she is for doing that. It's very hard to to search that out on yourself. So a lot of times people will either go to a different place that has a tableau and sign up. There are also discussions about things called transitional care programs, Mm -hmm. where there are areas that exist across the country you can sign yourself up when you're visiting that area and just decide the time that you want to go on Tableau versus hmm. you know, contacting, you know, a, you know, a typical dialysis center and you get the worst chair at the worst time because of, and understandably so, the patients that go there have their time slots all set up. Yeah. Um, but having Tableau more broadly available to patients across the country um, is really something that we're committed to in working with nephrologists so that they can adapt to this more so more people have access. So it so if I'm hearing you correctly, it, there may be a vision such that folks who travel don't necessarily have to bring their own machine with them. Maybe they could go somewhere where there is a machine and travel perhaps a little bit lighter. Yeah, I don't know anybody who enjoys even traveling with like a BiPAP machine, let alone a dialysis device. Is it a possibility in the future? I mean, this is um, the only dialysis machine that is more computer than it is a machinery. So I I don't see why the engineers and the people much smarter than me wouldn't be able to figure that out. But I think a lot of outset, like you said, Dory, it's been a long time in the making is to perfect and innovate the things that are really inhibiting patients. Uh, Example being opening up the home market so patients like we have today have access to devices that work for them, right? And and to throw back to what you said in the beginning, to actually treat the patient and not the numbers. And I think that that is the focus for 2023. How can we treat our dialysis patients and not their numbers? Can I chime in on the travel piece? Please, yes. So I have traveled with both Next Stage and since I've been on Tableau. How so did you do it? Tableau, yes, the machine, you can't take it, but my social worker from my clinic tried to locate um, a center that uses Tableau because everybody has their prescription key. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just okay. pull out your machine and you take it with you. As mm-hmm. soon as you enter it into any other Tableau machine, your prescription, everything is computer. It's in there. So if you're traveling somewhere that has a tablet or uses it, you take your key and everything's set. 
if you don't, if they don't do Tableau, just traveling, we, the social worker found a center that could take me down in Daytona Beach, Florida, hmm. and whatever chair, chair, sorry, chair time that was available is that's when I took that time. Sure. And I traveled with Next Stage, and it was Anything not the best great. experience. No, it <laughs> wasn't. It was. So, it was so yeah, I you tried that too. Then, yeah. So I was like traveling, have your social worker locate a center. They will set everything up for you, and it's easier that way. Can I chime in on a second? I just want to say that we have experienced it is very, very important to stay close in contact with your medical staff. Dr. Broman and his staff are wonderful. They check on us all the time to make sure that we have everything that we need. And if we're going to go travel or do anything, they tell us exactly what we need to do and how to proceed with that, as well as is in, uh, your staff with Outset. Outset is wonderful as well. They called and checked to see if we need anything. How Melvin is doing with Outset. Is he experiencing any problems? Do he have any questions? And I think all of that is very, very important to just stay in contact with Outset and with your clinical staff because they will help you, but you just have to ask questions. You can't just expect it to just be there. But we've been very blessed to have a wonderful system. And I'm sure that everyone else's system would be good too. If not, you do like Aaron did, you find you another neurologist. However, it's important to ask questions because doctors and nurses and other clinical staff will help you. Does, um, and this is for anybody who can answer it. Uh, this is a question from our pan our audience. Does Outset have a database that patients can search to find out which clinics use the Tableau? Yeah, our doctor has been making sure that, like I said, our doctor staff, they will let us know the area. So if we're going to go a certain area, for instance, Melvin had uh, one of his brothers died and we had to go to South Carolina. They told us the areas that we can go to to set up Tableau if he had to help him, uh, he, Dallas is there. Uh, we were very fortunate that we went on a day that our off day and we didn't have to do it, but we had everything set up in case he had to go. So that's what you, like I said, you can research yourself or you can ask your clinical staff to help you. Our outset, they will tell you where you need to go or how to find different areas. That's been our experience. Melvin, I'm so sorry for your loss. And over the years, I have heard too many sad stories of people who weren't able to travel to a wedding or a graduation or a loved one's funeral. So I'm really glad you were able to be there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Jen, I was going to see, because I know you got to play with the machine at, at ASN, and that was that was a big thrill. I was going to see if you had any questions that you wanted to ask anybody while we have this great panel here. Oh, well, I would like to know if you guys have named your machine. And if so, <laughs> what you've named it. I just call it great machine. I love it. I tell it every day. I love you. That's <laughs> I just, awesome. I love yeah, we, we really don't have a name. Well, no, we don't have a name, but I just tell the machine that I love it. And I tell them all the time. I say, I love Tapco. I really do. I tell everybody I meet that I talk to about it. I love Tableau. I told a lot of people about Tableau and Outset. So not a name. Awesome. Just I love you. <laughs> I, I've named mine Linda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just, you know, the quote, listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. Yeah, because she, like you said, she will yell at you when something's not right. I'm like, okay, oh, I love Linda. those. Yeah. Listen, I, love uh, me. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love the music. <laughs> I, I was wondering if it locked, and it does, because you mm -hmm. said it, it shows you on the screen and it does videos, but I didn't hear that it talks. And yeah, she says, uh oh, when you hit something wrong. Yeah, you hit the uh -oh. wrong button. Uh oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh -oh. I love it. Oh, that's adorable. That is very cute. Listen, Linda. <laughs> love Let's it. See. All right, I'm going to open up to the audience. We've got a few minutes left. Would anybody else like to ask a question of our panel? 
or do any while we're waiting to see if anybody else has a question um is there anything else that you would really like to make sure that people leave knowing that we haven't said anything about yet yeah i can just take a second sorry jen i didn't mean to cut you off um you know just getting back to you know, I just want patients who are either coming close to dialysis or who are already on dialysis to just do do what was said here. Ask questions, look for your options. You know, even when you're looking for a pair of shoes, you don't take the first pair of shoes you find, right? You try them on, you look, you feel, I really want the greater patient population around dialysis to feel empowered to ask and the right modality for them, not because they think it may be hard or somebody said, or my doctor really wants. I really, really want to encourage, you know, it's a new year. I think we need to be advocating for ourselves. And I really, you know, that's why it was so important for me to come and work for Outset because it's a company that is trying to get people to advocate for themselves. And I think that's where we overlap in the home setting with this group, with you, Dory and Jen, right? Getting patients to advocate and speak up for themselves. Absolutely. We have a lot in common with, uh, you know, the, the, world of, the world of home hemo and PD and with you all as well. I think it's important to open up to people and let them know that you are on dialysis, just to have a general conversation. Because I've talked to people when I ran into a young lady who did, had said her mother was on dialysis and she was struggling. And I told her all about home hemodialysis and she was very excited to hear that. So it's nice to let other people know that there is another choice. Well, so. and you all, you, Aaron, Melvin, it, you, you would have to tell somebody that you're on dialysis because it's not as if we can look at you and tell. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> <laughs> and there have been plenty of people that I've been able to pick out of a crowd or I'm like, well, that person's on dialysis because there's a certain, you know, there is just sort of a look when people aren't getting good dialysis. And it's pretty clear that you all are getting good yes. dialysis and not all dialysis is equal. And it's true. Not all, but you know what we haven't asked you is how long after a treatment does it take you to feel well again? Cool. Oh. No, I'm pretty much uh, right yes, after I'm finished, I can go grocery shopping. Grocery shopping. <laughs> I mean, he jumps just... in, he'll go get dinner if I don't feel like cooking. Yeah. Like, he go grocery shopping. He yes. Yeah, right uh, after. I mean, I don't, and I don't... that was not the case for my, the next stage. From my experience of my uh, siblings, like I said, was on dialysis, and they was in center. And I used to call them after they finished. He said, oh, I got to take a rest, man. I got to go sleep. I'll talk to you later. And he had to rest immediately. Uh, but now, yeah. I I pretty much do what yeah, I want. It does. That's wonderful. And like I said, it's a difference. But there's pretty a difference. much the same. Um, yeah. No real recovery time, but I do mine at night. Mm -hmm. or bed, so I'm, I'm usually heading to bed afterwards anyway. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's a weekend that I do it early, mm -hmm. you know, I can come downstairs and do what I need to do around the house and I'm okay. It's That's the great thing. It is a great thing. It, it, it is amazing to me, I guess, how many people sort of assume that it's their kidney failure that's making them feel so exhausted and terrible. And the kidney failure, I mean, kidney failure is not good. Nobody signs up to have kidney failure. But right. people think that it's that and they don't realize that the real issue is, is with their treatment and that they could yes. feel a lot better than they do. So... Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that seeing you all looking terrific and having lives and being active is something that will really make people think, you know, wait a minute, maybe I could feel better. Maybe I could be more active. Maybe it isn't kidney yes. failure. Maybe it's my treatment. Maybe I need, maybe a I need to tweak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I need a different treatment. That's, that's right. But yeah. That's, uh, I'm always surprised how many people sort of make they kind of don't realize what's behind how they feel every day. Well, let's hope this helps. Yeah, it certainly looks like it does. <laughs> All right, um, I am not seeing any other questions. So if anybody would like to 
add another thing or two. Um, we got a few minutes, and if not, we can end a few minutes early, and that's fine too. What do y'all think? Anybody want to pop in anything else that we missed? I was going to say what Cynthia was saying, that if the treatment isn't working for you, you're always free to explore other choices and find something else that might work for you. And that cross training between different systems, as Erin knows, as I know, as I'm sure most people on here know, it, it's actually, it's easier to switch between systems if you need to, than it might initially appear. Because at the end of the day, the red line always goes one way, the blue line always goes the other. And once you have that kind of sorted out, it, at least you understand the direction and it becomes a lot easier to cross train systems. And I love that patients cross train too. It's awesome to see. Questions, yeah, just ask questions. All right, I love it. I wanna thank everybody. I'd like to thank Outset for sponsoring the session, which was just as informative and inspiring as I had hoped it would be. So thank you all for your time, for your thoughtful answers, for your sharing your experiences and telling us about uh, human factors and all of the things. And I appreciate you all very much. And I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and watch the uh, Home Dialysis Central website because this recording will be live pretty soon. Okay, thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. And thanks to our audience also. We appreciate you. Take care. Bye bye.